is he going to get sacked? That's a question that is rearing its head more and more and more every day. Now, I want to get your views and opinions. Eric Ten Hag, is he starting to stare down the barrel? Four Premier League defeats in the opening seven games. Nine games into the season, five defeats for Manchester United. This is the man who had nine a 70% win record last year. 70%. Hit the like buttons, by the way. Please subscribe to the terrace. Turn on bell notifications as well. The little bell button next to the subscribe button. Put push notifications on as well because you don't always get told when new content comes out from the terrace. And you 340-odd thousand brilliant people, I want to make sure you've subscribed to us. I want to make sure you see the content. So please get that done. I'm in pain right now as a Man United fan. And I want to defend my club. I want to back my team finding it so hard to do it. I really believed that we'd purchase well in the summer and the manager would take us on a journey and we would move to another level this season. I really thought we would. And I'm not angry at Ten Hag per se. I'm angry at myself for being dragged in again. And I think what we often do as fans is when a player makes us believe, a manager, the team, the club, when they make us believe and they let us down, we typically take it out on them. What I'm trying to do is reflect on what I think was going to work and what have I got wrong. And maybe I have overrated this manager. Maybe I have overrated certain players. That remains to be seen, but I'm very open to the, the idea that I got that wrong. But what we can't do is remove ourselves from the reality of the matter that we can't keep losing and the manager keep his job. I understand riding through the tough times he can't keep losing. He's got to turn this round soon. We go another seven Premier League games with three or four defeats. You're talking about in the bottom 16 teams in the league. That is unacceptable after the amount of money that's invested, even in the early stages of a rebuild. It absolutely is. But my problem here lies that there is deeper issues at the club, and we'll get into them. But I want to I want to listen to a few videos. I want to get your opinion. Do you think he's facing the sack? But there's a few things here on TalkSport I want I want to listen to because I think they really reign true. Style uh, can somewhat be put to bed if you've not got the right players that you, you know. And he's had he's been in charge of the signings of got players coming in to Anthony to Mount. You know these players, Casemiro, uh, all coming into the team. There will be there. He's players. There's nowhere to hide when. They're I agree with Alan Pardew. That's why I'm not personally, there's, there's this part of me that's saying, right, I want to see four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games where the majority of these signings are playing together. You're never going to get all of them. We know there's injuries now. And I'm talking players that he's given new deals to, made captain. So the, the Delos, the Brunos, the Rashfords, with the majority of his signings. I want to see a handful of games, at least five or six, to see whether we start to see these improvements before I... Maybe, check, maybe completely change my mind about him because I'm very fluid when it comes to what's good and what's bad for my football club, and you need to be. But Pardew is right. The manager's got very little places to hide with the more and more players that he brings into the football club. I also think as well, when we talk about the, the potential sacking of him, you have to look at examples that are being set. And here's another clip I want you to look at here in relation to Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford had a wonderful season last year. Played his way back into the England team. Scored a lot of important goals for Manchester United. Got that big new contract. And nobody was complaining when he got that contract. I'm really disappointed in Marcus Rashford. Well, the way that he has regressed. And I think this was an opportunity for Ten Hag, after what happened in midweek, to make an example of Rashford and say, do you know what? You're not playing well enough to get your place in this team. Bang on. I put my starting lineup out Thursday or Friday. Said the same thing. He's not been good enough. Garnacho had a good game midweek. Start him. And this is where I will look at the manager and call out mistakes. So I'll defend him in certain areas and I'll condemn him in others. It's called balance. As I say, I'm, I'm not completely done with Ten Hag at this moment in time, but he needs to start winning. But his actions are key. And his actions are key because Rashford should not have started the game. He was awful. Now, listen, that doesn't defend everybody else for not creating enough chances, not finishing their dinner. But Marcus Rashford doesn't deserve to be playing right now. And if the manager keeps picking him, you get to a point where that can only, you, you then only blame the manager. Rashford's in bad form. 
have criticised him, but he shouldn't be in the starting eleven now. On top of this, you have situations like this at the football club. Lissandro Martinez was taking painkillers to play in games this season. As further tests on Thursday revealed that his foot fracture had not correctly healed. Now, deep this gross negligence from the club for a moment. And this isn't on the player or Ten Hag. Neither are doctors. And they don't sign off the medical reports. The player doesn't know if his foot hasn't healed properly. He might have a, a pain in there. And they're obviously just saying, look, take some painkillers. It's, you know, have some massages. It'll work itself out. It's normal after an injury that you suffered. Turns out the, the bone ain't healed properly. How has this player ever been signed off to play again? When the bone ain't right. And we've seen the Sandro been off all season. Now we know why. He was basically playing with a broken foot. Or a semi-broken foot. A mangled foot. And the club doctors signed off on this. No wonder we have an injury crisis. No wonder we have so many problems. From leak, roof, roofs leaking, piss and shit all over the, uh, the toilets in the stadium. Players starting games when they get new deals, when they should be dropped. Injury list as long as your arm. This club is an absolute joke. Some of it is on the players. Some of it is on the manager. But overall, the way this club is run is nothing short, genuinely, is nothing short of a disgrace. Susanna, that come the end of the season, if, for example, Liverpool were to miss out on the title by a point, everyone will talk about it. It will be, we missed out because of a refereeing issue, because of a VAR issue. Um, it's interesting to see that Liverpool have actually put out a statement. Now, yes. I'm quite surprised by this because the statement almost suggests um, they want something to happen. And there's been no precedent in the Premier League for a, a game to be replayed. I'd want something to happen. The problem is, though, we... Game in, game out, we see problems. I always want to stop this clip here. This is on Good Morning Britain. Now, maybe you all can educate me and show me where in the past on a morning semi-political, semi-cultural, semi-social show where they discuss a VAR decision. I've personally never seen it before. I understand why. Liverpool were robbed an absolutely disgraceful piece of officiating cost them, in my opinion. That goal would have changed the game. Goals do change games. Results change seasons. We know this. There's talk of replaying matches and everything else. Now, you know I'm an advocate of that. I actually think to fix this problem, it would take a team to fall upon a sword and say, do you know what? Nobody else has done it. We are going to be the club that says, we'll replay the game. Or we'll start the match again at 1-1. Or whatever it may be. We'll, we'll do something. Spurs won't do this. And they have no obligation to but i think it's going to take an action like this to set the precedent so that refereeing decisions become better moving forward it would only have to happen once for there to be such a focus and maybe it's going to be down to liverpool now maybe liverpool the next time they benefit for instance the offside the goal that was ruled out wolves versus liverpool fa cup that was ruled out for offside where other camera angles clearly showed that it was onside Next time Liverpool benefit from a bad decision, this is where what you don't want is tribalism. Well, we lost out to Liverpool, so screw you. What we now need to see is Liverpool say, we will replay the game. Or just in the, in the, in the, in the real time, go, do you know what? That shouldn't have stood that goal. So we'll kick the ball in our own net so, that, so the scores are level again. It's, Liverpool now have a chance to set the precedent because they are the first club that I've seen go public and say that this is an absolute disgrace. Also, what I now want to see is the media have this level of attention towards other decisions that are, that are incorrect. And now we have to start scrutinizing what PG, MOL are telling us. Because it now turns out these people aren't even watching the games. <laughs> they don't even watch the games. They sit there twiddling their thumbs, watching Netflix. I don't know, having shots, drinking beer, you know, on Pornhub. I don't know what they're doing, but they're not watching the games. So everything is called into question. But we can't just see this level of attention once. Also, this should not be used as a tool to attack Spurs with. This isn't their fault in any capacity. But Liverpool now, I want Liverpool to be that beacon of hope. The next time they get a goal or they get a decision that helps them go score an own goal straight away or, give the, or let the other team score or replay the game or forfeit your position in that tournament, if you benefit from it, you have to now set the precedent. I'd love Man United to be the club that does it, by the way. Do you know how much honour, do you know how much respect, do you know how much bigger that makes your club? 
Because you know what? We shouldn't have had that goal. We'll give you a goal back. Poor refereeing. Oh, it was onside. All right, cool. We'll accept it. Boom. There you go. We'll let you walk it into the net. Clubs have got to start doing it now. I know what you're all saying. Terry, you're mad. No one's going to do that. I know. <laughs> I know nobody's going to do it because nobody really cares. People are, people are angry about it because they're Liverpool fans and they lost the game. Arsenal fans are angry about it because that they'll think about the Brentford game last year and our oh, Tottenham benefited. But if it happens to Arsenal next weekend against City, certain fan bases that are condemning it this weekend will laugh about it. For instance, nobody was this angry when Man United were denied a clear-cut penalty against Tottenham. Where was, the, where was Good Morning Britain? Where were all these Liverpool fans are today tweeting that every football fan should be standing up for them? I agree with you. But where were you two weeks? In fact, where were you all earlier on Saturday? Well, an offside goal that Man United conceded has still not even been discussed by the mainstream media. Also, where were all these people last season when Arsenal's goal was this? Was, 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 they conceded that goal against Brentford. Where was everybody? You called Arsenal fans bitter because of your fear and your hatred of Arsenal. You enjoyed it. You celebrated it. None of you use it as an excuse as to why maybe they didn't win the league. Now, let me round this back. Liverpool fans are right to be angry. It's correct that it's on Good Morning Britain. Liverpool fans are right that all fans have got to come together to stop these bad decisions. But you've got to practice what you preach. And it first of all starts with apologies for things that you have ignored. Drop your own tribalism, bitterness, pettiness, bias, and come together as a group. Now, I don't think it's going to happen. Because if Liverpool benefit from a decision this forthcoming weekend that's incorrect, they'll celebrate it. They'll say, so what? We had that happened to us last week. They won't score an own goal to level the game out. They won't replay the match. And I'm not going to blame them. Because no fan base is going to call for this. No club is going to really do it. We just pick and choose when we're angry. We pick and choose when to moan. But like most elements of UK, British, English society we are a lot of talk and there's no action nobody is prepared to sacrifice anything for things to improve moving forward we're a bloated overprivileged society that just whinge in 2023 and do absolutely nothing about it so i agree with the attention this is getting but i kid you not this this talking point is going nowhere because there isn't a fan base and a club worth its salt in the uk that will sacrifice a game, a goal, a point, a place in the competition for the improvement of football overall. It's all very much lifting up the, the ladder and saying, I'm okay, Jack. That is the attitude of not just our football culture, but culture in general in the UK. Simple and as straightforward as that. Good morning, Britain, for this, but not for other things is a madness to me. Listen, people, hit the like button. Subscribe to the terrace. And listen, I, I want to end this stream by saying this. This is not a dig at Spurs. It's not a dig at Liverpool. It's not a dig at Man United or Arsenal. The point I'm making, and I hope you've heard it, and again, I hope you're not suffering with cognitive dissonance and, 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 and an emotional outpour that stops your ears from working, that renders you deaf, that ruins your capacity to understand, comprehend, digest, reflect before responding. This isn't an attack on any individual club. We are all pretty much collectively the same. And the Liverpool fan I follow on Twitter that said that we've all got to stand up together today. And I tweeted her, and it's a bit of a joke, but we'll see what happens. The next time Man United suffer a bad decision, like we've had loads in the last few weeks, I expect to see her as a Liverpool fan tweeting in our defence. I don't think she'll do it. Not because she's a bad person. Because we're too tribal when it comes to football. We're all like it. Listen, take care. Goodbye. God bless. See you all again soon. Peace.